Okay, underwater physics time. Let's do it for blue since we're underwater today. Um, today we're going to, I think, briefly talk about circular motion because the sound quality is poorer than microphone dive. We're going to load up all the excuses. We're talking about circular motion underwater. Now, the underwater thing is a joke in case you can't already tell. Circular motion. We're talking about. So circular motion, as you said in your, in your bell work, is an object moving in a circle due to a force. Um, it doesn't have to be a whole circle. Any, any amount of a circle, any curved motion. Oh, I guess this is larger. Any curved motion can, uh, is considered circular motion. What's the objective? Correlate torques and circular motion. Correlate torques and circular motion. So we're going to relate together, correlate, torque, a word you've heard but may not know about, correlate torque and circular motion. This is a really, actually, fairly easy to, objective to, accept, as, to satisfy because um, in the same way that Forces cause a change in linear motion. Torque causes a change in circular motion. Uh, change in circular motion is caused by torque. So a torque you can think of almost like a, a force that is making something. Instead of changing its linear motion, it's motion in a line. It's, made, it's changing its circular motion. It's changing its, well, what is circular motion? There's two different kind of words that we use to describe when something is moving in a circle. You mentioned, both of you mentioned them in your belt work. A thing can be, if it's moving in a circle, it can be either. Sorry, people. No, those are the, for, the forces that cause that. A revolution. Yeah, a revolution or a rotation. And there is a distinction there. A revolution, we usually use that word when we mean that an object is moving in a circle around another object. And a rotation we use to mean that an object is moving in a circle in a circle about its own axis. So uh, the Earth around the Sun. Here's the Sun. Here's the Earth. This this orbit is its revolution around the Sun. But it also, and that's in that way. But it also rotates about its own axis. It, it itself is spinning, and that's a rotation. Um, two and one. What? It's a two and one. It's a two and one. It's a double spin. Spin among a spin. In fact, the we don't we don't watch the videos because some people said they hated them. But the the what the video brings up is that the the ancient Greeks had an idea of epicycles, where they explained this much. Actually, they explained the elliptical path of a planet around the sun not as one elliptical shape, one almost circular shape, but as a circle that also has a circle going around a circle called an epicycle which just means cycle on, or circle on top, uh, a circle on top of a circle. Uh, then we can relate this idea of circular motion to linear motion. Um, when you think of, your book uses the example of a bug on a record player. So we, you have to think about the way that we measure, this isn't supposed to be a record. Let's say there are two bugs on the record player. There's one right here, and there's one right here. And we have to think about this way that we measure circular motion. We usually use something like revolutions per second, um, revolutions per second, or rotations per second, depending on how we want to, uh, well, what kind of motion it has. It's a revolution per, and when I say per second, it could be per minute or per month, or in this case, revolutions per year. It has one revolution per year, or it has one rotation per day. But those are those are units of, of circular motion, of we measure them in rotations per unit time is how we measure circular motion. So we, both of these two bugs on the solid record will have a, a circular speed, right? Uh, angular velocity, we call it, for both. Let's, let's label them. This is going to be A. This is B. Let's have them have names. This is an. And this is Bert. Bolin. Oh, and, and, and this is Bolin. No, and and Bert. What is the angular velocity? Let's say this the record moves at 33.3 revolutions per minute. That's a standard speed for a record. 33.3 RPM, revolutions per minute. Standard speed for a record. What is Anne's angular velocity then? Well, how many circles is she doing per minute? And pull up. 
Try again. Oh. It has to be 33.3. They're both, the record is solid, so they're both moving at 33.3 RPM. So both N and Birch, their angular velocity is 33.3 RPM. But we can also relate their angular velocity to a tangential velocity. So the tangential velocity, we, we use this. This is normal. You remember this is V, just normal linear velocity. When we're talking about circle, but we want to also talk about lines among circle, we talk about tangent lines, tangential velocity. You remember what a tangent line is from your trigonometry, right? A line that touches a circle at only one point is called a tangent line. Yeah. And we use that tangential velocity to refer to the velocity. So each, both Anne and Bert will have, at this frozen moment of time, will have some tangential velocity. You can see from my diagram and from your common sense that Bert will have a higher tangential velocity. Basically, even though they're both spinning at the same rate of spin, one revolution per minute, Bert will be moving through space faster because he has a bigger distance to cover. Kind of like when you're running around the track, you can either choose to run around the track on the outside or the inside. And the inside runner has less ground to cover because they're effectively moving in a smaller circle. Yeah. So, A and then Bert are both on our record. They both have the same angular velocity, but tangential velocity, their, their linear speed, how fast they move through space, is given by V equals omega r, where V is tangential velocity, which is also the same thing as linear velocity, or just what we used to call velocity, right? The thing that we in chapter 2 called velocity, we now call tangential velocity to make sure we're talking about the same thing. What do we measure tangential velocity? What do we measure regular velocity? Remember, it is regular velocity. Meters per second, yes, I am. Omega, lowercase omega, is this is the Greek letter omega, it's the lowercase version, um, is angular velocity, which we measure in something like RPM or hertz, which is per second, um, one over seconds, I'll put that, I'll put seconds to the negative first power. Uh, we sometimes measure it in two pi radians per second or whatever. They could have any kind of angle measure divided by a time measure. And r is the radius, which is the distance from the center, measured in meters. So now listen, these things like radians and degrees that we measure angles in are kind of, uh, they're like pseudo units. We don't really count them as units in the SI. Um, we might say something like revolutions per minute, but really the unit there that matters is the minute. It's doing one revolution per minute. The revolution itself is not a unit. Um, so let's say in this, in a certain amount of time, they each cover an angle of 15 degrees, right? It's the same angle for both, part of why they have to have the same angular velocity. And so they've covered, let's say, 15 degrees per second. Well, the degrees is not a real unit that we have to worry about rock dropping now. So basically, when we multiply their angular velocity times their radius, right? This one has a radius of, let's say, 1, and this one has a radius of, let's say, Five, we can get there how fast they're moving through space. Basically, in this model, Bert is moving five times as fast as Amy. Do you see why? Meters is a one fifty. That's fifteen degrees. Oh, I'm sorry. And no, it's not because of that. But why is Bert moving faster through space than Anne? Because he has a bigger circle. Yeah, he's he's moving on a bigger circle. Basically, they're both moving fifteen degrees in their respective circles in this amount of time. But since Bert is further away from the center, he has a greater distance to cover. He has, look at the arc of this circle. So Anne covers this distance, and Bert covers this distance in the same amount of time. Therefore, Bert must be moving faster. That's how we relate angular and tangential velocities. Um, what, the next thing, what holds the Earth in a circle around the sun? Gravity. Which direction is gravity acting on this diagram? If I were to start my arrow here, which direction does gravity act from the Earth to the Sun? Toward, toward the Sun. Good. Everyone knows that. That's a very simple thing to do. Um, let's take it one step further. Now let's do the same diagram. And now I have, let's say I have a bucket. And I've got a handle of my bucket. I've got a bucket out here. 
which direction is the force acting on this bucket? It's, a, it's the same model. I'm going in a circle again. L. So I have the same thing here. Earth, the force acting to hold Earth in the circle is, as Justice said correctly, inward. Gravity is acting inward. What direction, if I'm holding this bucket, is holding it in a circle? The same model, the same exact thing. <laughs> no, it's not gravity. It's not, not, I'm not asking the kind of force. I'm asking what direction does the in. force act. Oh, in. 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 in both cases, the force is in. This inward force is called a centripetal force. Now, the reason there was confusion there, the reason there was confusion in your bell word, is because if you're the bucket, right, or you're on a merry-go-round, let's do the same model, except now, instead of the bucket, uh, you're on a merry-go-round. This is you from the top. And those are your little ears. This is your dots on your dress. I don't know. Um, this is you from the top. It feels like, and you know from experience probably, that if you let go of the merry go which way do you go? Oh. It seems like you go out. And in fact, you do go out. Um, so why does it feel like that? So the centripetal force pulls in, inward. It's always acting inward. And in fact, that's the only force on this system. By the way, what force is holding you inward on the on the merry-go-round. You, your, your arms, your strength of arm is pulling you in. And you experience that too, right? If you're on a merry-go-round and you don't want to fall off, you have to pull in, right? That's the centripetal force. That's the inward force. So then why does it feel like you're going out? Because Let's go no back to our... The outside. No, there's no force on the outside. This is the only force. You're pulling in is the only force in this system. The earth and the sun pulling each other is the only force in this system. Let's go back to this model. This one's a little bit easier to understand conceptually. We all know that the gravity acts in. What happens, what's going to happen if the sun is erased? There's no more sun in existence. Where's the earth going to go? It just go where, where, Whatever direction it was going in a straight line forever for all of eternity. Because of its what? Due to what property of physics? What what of Newton's laws? Why? What says it's going to keep going in a straight line forever? Inertia. inertia. Due to inertia. Now, I'm asking you to consider that it's the same thing here. If you let go of the merry-go-round, it's not that you're being forced out, it's that your what is pulling you out? Inertia. Inertia. You go a straight line at a constant speed, I mean really forever, except for obviously there's grass and stuff, to friction you to a stop. But that's due to inertia. So this, this fictitious force over here, caused by what? What's causing this? What, what's causing you to feel like you're being pulled out or to cause the earth to leave the solar system when the sun exists? Stop inertia. inertia. But that's not a real force. Remember, inertia is not a force. Inertia is a property of matter, as the Land Science Guy theme song says. This is what we call the centrifugal force. It's false. It's fake. It's fake news. It does not exist. There's no such force as a centrifugal force. It it's, it's an apparent reality, which means it appears to be true if you are in a rotation. But it's not. It's because you were rotating. And your inertia wants to pull you in a straight line. If fake, why happens? Fake, yeah. If fake, why happens? Why does it feel like that's true? So what is the, what's the one word response to that? Inertia, which is not a force. So because, you're, because the universe, let's say it this way, the universe naturally acts in straight lines, right? Things either are stopped or they move in a straight line at a constant speed forever. This has motion. And if there's no force, pulling it in, its motion keeps it going in a straight line forever. It's inertia does that. Now, like I said, it appears um, if you're in the, if you're on the merry-go-round, or if you're in that part of the carnival ride where you're being, it feels like you're being forced. Have you ever done that one where you go in and you go really, really fast and it pushes you out to the wall? It feels, it really does feel like you're being pushed out to the wall. But that's not a real force, that's inertia. The way the practical, well, maybe not quite practical, but the science fiction practical use for this is that it's, it appears to be possible that we could build we could build a space station, something like this. There's a little middle spot. It looks like a spoke of a wheel almost. And this thing on the outside will rotate. So we got rotation here. What's holding, what's the centripetal force here? What's providing the force inward? Here. It's these, right? The, the force is the tension in whatever strands you have in there. But people can walk around 
on the outside. And they, because of their inertia, right, because it's spinning, any, any, every second that goes by, they're being, basically the whole structure is pulling them in. They're being, they have an inward pull, but their inertia would have them go this way, and so instead they end up going in a circle, right? So we get the circular motion here. Um, but this, this apparent reality, this centrifugal force, which is fake, fake news, makes them feel like they're being pushed out, which would be useful here because that could simulate gravity. Simulated gravity. So pretty much they get zeroed out almost? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the force, even though the force is pulling in, the inertia would have them go in a straight line at a constant speed out, so to speak. Right? So they don't get quite canceled out, but the, the effect of this inward force is a feeling of outward pull. What happens if they stay still? Yeah, if it stops, uh, then they're, they're in weightlessness. They're in free fall. Okay. The, a nice little picture that your book provides for like a very basic idea. This is you do your, your water bucket experiment like Justice did, but you put a ladybug in there. The ladybug would feel like that was you know, that, that was the floor. You like you have a little ladybug in the bucket, and she's crawling around on there. He or she, ladybugs aren't all female. Um, it would it would feel like it was being pulled outward, even though it's actually being pulled inward. Um, the last thing before we're done is that we can also, in the same way that we related uh, angular velocity to tangential velocity, we can also relate torque to regular force. So torque is the Greek letter tau. So that Greek letter tau is torque. F is, we already know, force. R is, again, radius. What do we measure radius in in the SI? Meters. Meters. Force is measured in. Newtons. So then torque would be measured in newton times meter, the newton meter. You might have heard, if you have any dealing um, with like a, a mechanic situation, when they, when they tighten the nuts to put on a car's tire, in the English system they say we need 90 foot-pounds of torque. They, they have a special torque wrench that you set to 90 foot-pounds of torque, and when you tighten it, it tightens up until that particular torque. So you see that foot-pounds is the English equivalent of Newton meters, where Newtons measure force, just like pounds measure force in the English system, and meters measure distance, just like feet measure distance in the English system. So a foot pound of torque is not identical numerically to a Newton meter, but they measure the same thing. They both measure torques. So the math in this chapter will be fairly simple. You'll have you'll have to convert between, or you'll have to determine the tangential velocity given an angular velocity, and you'll have to calculate torque given a force. But the thing that relates those is just the radius of the circle. You have questions? Sorry for the sound quality.